stages three and four of the Nettia National Capital Rally were side by side in the forest southwest of Canberra. Stage three, Cottage Five Ways, was 16.39 kilometres south. Then they turned around for stage four, Tidbinbilla, an 18 kilometre parallel run back north through the forests. Tom Clark and Ryan Preston had a 13 second lead over Glenn Raymond going into stage three. Clark was on a charge. 50, break two left over Brower, break two left. 50, four right, repeat, four right. Into. Their Canberra luck looked to have changed for the better. With less than a kilometre of stage three to go, that luck was about to change. Uh, five right. Oh, you're kidding. So five right. 50 is a three right triple portion neat. So three right triple portion neat. We're done, mate. What is it? Don't know. Uh, eight left straight. Over jump, 100. Lost boost. It might be the hose, mate. Yeah. And seven left. So seven left. And there's six right. We're near the finish. Yeah, mate. Here it is here. Oh uh, no. Keep going, keep going mate. Amazingly, they were still second quickest. Only four seconds slower than Raymond. Three, two, one. Between the stages, they fixed the issue and were back. But it would be short lived. 50. Two right don't. Oh, there it goes. Did it? Yep. Sure? Yep. Their chances of a win here in Canberra are gone. Yeah, look, we, we cleared the first two um, quite nicely and uh, got into third and we get about a K from the end and we had a hose let go. So we got out of that stage, we repaired the hose, but at, um, in that fourth stage then it let go within 500 metres. So look, we limped out of the stage, but it's, it's damaged us. We've, um, we've probably lost about seven minutes, I'd say. Damaged it had. They finished heat one dead last. Over in the Raymond camp though, things were going well. Despite Clark's problems, Raymond was not backing off. Breaking, then three left narrow. Breaking, then Raymond left was narrow. quickest on stage three, setting a time of 11 minutes and 44 right, seconds over the 16.39 kilometre stage, an average of 84 kilometres an hour. Right behind him on the road, Raymond had Tristan Kent nipping at his heels. Kent was also pushing hard and wanted to beat his rival. In stage three, he was 10 seconds off Raymond's pace and third on the stage behind Clark. In stage four, Kent looked fast, but was he fast enough to take the stage win? At the end of the stage, Kent was 17 seconds behind his rival Raymond. And with the times in, he had to settle for second in the heat. He'd swapped co-drivers for this event, with regular co-driver Rob Males opting out. Rob wasn't confident on pace notes for the event, so Kira's jumped in, and she's doing a good job so far. Really struggling to come to terms with the notes. It's, yeah, I'm breaking and lifting for so many things I shouldn't be, so it's really hard to commit. But the winner of Heat 1 would be Glenn Raymond and Kate Catford. They won two of the four stages with a 51 second gap back to Kent. It was another convincing win for Raymond, making it four Heat wins out of five so far in the championship. Yeah, pretty happy, obviously just trying to get to the end, but the pace is really good. I'm actually very impressed with the New South Wales guys the first of the ARC field. I think they are, the pace in the state championship is really hot. Unfortunately, Tom's had an issue, which uh, I feel really bad for him because he'll set some really good times. Behind the top two, there was a battle going on for third in the heat between Richard Shimon and Jim Gleeson in the Mitsubishi Evo, and Andrew Penny and Reese Llewellyn in the Subaru WRX. Shimon would take the win for stage three, Cottage Five Ways, with a time of 12 minutes and 20 seconds. But it's easy to make a mistake. 50, 
three plus left. Three plus left here. Thirty. Caution. Three plus. Ah, oh, that's the wrong left. That's the wrong left, Andrew. <laughs> the spin costing Penny valuable time and finishing six seconds behind Shimon on the stage and dropping back seven seconds behind him in the heat. In the next stage, Tidbin Billa, the tables turned, with Penny taking 12 seconds off Shimon to jump ahead and finish third outright in the heat. Good work. I've been driving pretty smooth most of the day and uh, nowhere we can actually drive a bit faster and um, the Hoosier tyres are coming to life now, they've worn them in a little bit and we're going to get out there and give it a good go. Meanwhile, Shimon and Gleeson would have to settle for fourth in the heat, missing out on third by just four and a half seconds overall. We had a spin on the first stage and then uh, on the last stage there I missed the end of a straight, I was one press behind him and I overshoot the hard left at the end of it, so we left probably half a minute, 40 seconds out in the forest. But anyway, it's all good, no dents, so it's all good. There was also a battle developing between the two two-wheel drive cars of Tony Sullins and Kaylee Newell in the Citroen DS3, and Tom Dermody and Owen Moynihan in the Mark II Ford RS1800 Escort. Left 100, hog 6 right 100. Dermody was 7.9 seconds in front of Sullins in stage 3, where the classic escort would set a time of 12 minutes and 34 seconds. Hog, that's 5 right, Titans true, junction hard to see. Once again, the tables would turn for these two cars in stage 4, Sullins taking the win. He beat Dermody by a meagre two tenths of a second. Such is the close competition between the two drivers. But overall in the heat, Sullins would come up trumps 13 seconds in front of Dermody. I had a go on the first stage and I had a go on the rest of them. Stage three, we um, I, I cocked up a corner and went left instead of right and stopped and stalled and backed back and lost a, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. But apart from that, it's been a pretty good run. kaylee has been awesome on the notes and it's been good. For Dermody, his main focus is the East Coast Classic Rally Series, and he won Heat 1 convincingly. Dermody was over two minutes in front of the next East Coast Classic car. But for Heat 2, he has a plan for the MTA Series. We'll probably train up the anti for the next run out because uh, we know where everything is now and it's more predictable. This morning was a bit unpredictable in some of the fast bends, like there was mud and puddles of water, so... Uh, no, I think we'll, we should have a better run this next time out. Plus, I've warmed up a bit. Into sudden tree right. Four left into sudden tree right. Bethany Cullen and Jasmine Lockley in the older Mitsubishi Lancer Evo were locked in a battle with Stuart Collison and Lance Arundel in the Subaru WRX. Cullen would eventually win that battle, finishing 29 seconds in front. And in the East Coast Classic Rally Series, the fight for second and third was between Stephen Duffy and Damien Hands in the 180B, and Peter Dimmick and Pete Helwig in the Datsun 240Z. Duffy would eventually take second in the heat, Dimmick was third. The other Heat 1 finisher in the East Coast Classic Rally Series was the repeat rally team of Peter Stringfellow Sr. and Peter Stringfellow Jr. in a Datsun Stanza. Mick Hewshin and Paul Bailey in the WRX were up into eighth outright before retiring in stage three. In our next video, we'll cover all the Heat 2 action. <laughs>